previously in Finero. God is delivering some people right now. Wherever you are, if you've been oppressed, tormented, and disturbed by witchcraft, God is delivering you right now. Lady in gray, come. From today, any form of witchcraft in your father's household, it leaves. Go! Go! Brother, has your heart been pumping sometimes fast, abnormally? Eh? For how long? But it has been pumping, yes. I saw you have a cardiac arrest at 36 years. And I saw them carry you, put you in a casket and bury you. Your heart had stopped. But we're going to change it. Somebody clap your hands for Jesus. Even that lady, come. Even you, you've been, your heart has been pumping abnormally. How long has that been? I started feeling it at 19 years. From what? 19. 19, your heart has been pumping abnormally. Yeah. Somebody stretch your hands towards her. <laughs> Go. Go. In Jesus' name. Come. For you, the attack was on the head. I saw you develop a katuma later in life. And I saw them operate your head and removing a tumor and complications following after. In fact, there is death in your family. There are dreams that people are dreaming, people die. You have also been dreaming them? Huh? Two weeks now. Two weeks now, you've been dreaming people die. Somebody sent power over her family. In the name of Jesus. Go! And never should you come back again. Somebody speak to barrenness. Tell it to leave. Leave. Leave! In Jesus' name, it's done. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. There's a lady behind that gentleman in a black shirt. Yes. I've seen an attack on you and I've seen it ex it's an extension on you but it's an attack on like relatives, many relatives of your inner family circle and um, it's HIV related. Who died those years ago? Your father. You know HIV is a spirit and I saw it coming on you too. But we have the power to kill it. You're not going to die of HIV. Give me your hand. Somebody speak. Go. Go. The wisdom of God is many-sided. In as the prism of influence of the wisdom of God has many lenses through which men can see. That is why when the Holy Spirit is speaking about the relationship that we carry with him as he teaches us, the Bible tells us that in, in, in the Amplified Version in Corinthians 2, he says, he searches out the bottomless things of God. God is bottomless. And the more you see in the wisdom of God, the more you influence the spirit world the more you make a mark in the principalities and powers and heavenly places wherever you are now when the bible says that you are epistles written in our hearts known and read by all men do you know that all men read you there's a man who can come with a multi-million dollar deal and trust you because he reads you that you're trustable opportunities in this world are best on trust god has given you and i the opportunity to brand your spirit you can brand your spirit you can make it appear the way you want it to appear such that men read it the way you want it to be read. If they are looking for the best engineer, you can brand your spirit to be the best. All you need is a spiritual experience and you'll stand before kings and not before mean men. The Bible says Gentiles shall come to your light and kings shall come to your rising. There are places skin color can't take you. There are places education status can't take you. There are places connections and networks can't take you. Not by power, not by might, but 
by my spirit. The order of the spirit is you cannot resist the devil to flee. If you have not understood the total sum of what it means to submit yourself unto God. The power that a man receives because he has learned to yield to the Holy Ghost is the very power by which that man resists the devil. When the Bible says do not give place to the devil, it means don't give him opportunity. If the Bible says don't give the devil opportunity, it already means he has no opportunity over you. If the Bible tells you don't give power to the devil, it only means he doesn't have power over you. He's not supposed to have a place in you. You remember when Jesus was speaking in John 14, 30? He says, for I shall not speak much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and has nothing in me. When you look at Jesus, the prince of this world has nothing in him. He has nothing in you. He's not supposed to have an opportunity in you. He's not supposed to have power in you. He's not supposed to have an accordance to act in you. Your spirit it's in the image. You were made in the image and likeness of God. And you carry the subscription of God. Give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And give unto God what belongs to God. Submit yourselves to God. The Bible is very clear. Nothing from without entering a man defileth him. He says there is not even one thing outside a man which by going into him can pollute and defile him. But the things which come out of a man are what defile him and make him unhallowed and unclean. What does the next verse say? Then are you also unintelligent and dull and without understanding? Do you not discern and see that whatever goes into a man from outside cannot make him unhallowed and unclean? Since it does not reach and enter his heart. The word heart there is not physical. It is your spirit. Listen, keep your heart. That's a man with integrity in the spirit. You don't lose your heart. It means you can be tempted to a point where you feel like believing is your life. And it's as though the more you believe, the more you're dying. Watch it, it die. But don't stop believing. You remember in Revelation chapter 2, when he's speaking of the church in Smyrna, he says, fear nothing in the things you're about to suffer. He says, but stay on God. And he repeated it again and said what? Fear nothing. He says, the devil is about to throw you in jail for a time. Of testing only 10 days he says it won't last forever he says don't don't what what does he say he says don't quit even if it costs your life